Signature Chamber event. And thank you all so much for being here with us today. Uh, as Nate mentioned, this is our 13th anniversary, and we have past recipients of this esteemed honor who are here with us today. I'd like all of you to that are here, the past winners, please rise so that we can yes. see you again. right? So we have to see what Webster says about, about inspire. To impel, to motivate, to exert or animate, enliven, exalting influence, to influence. So that's a pretty good testament of what inspiring is all about. And I promise you the people that I'm excited to introduce tonight do all of that and a lot more. And I've been able to read up on them and meet them briefly tonight and uh, buckle up. It's going to be a great night. We begin with an award under the category Inspiring Our Youth. It recognizes individuals who demonstrate special devotion to molding our young people. These individuals include educators, counselors, group leaders, or faith-based youth directors. This year, we have two honorees in that category. Our first, Stephen Halstead of the Central Park Performing Arts Foundation, which supports this building that we're in right now. <laughs> Sue Osborne, who represents the foundation, nominated Stephen. She writes about a new Drama Essentials after-school program for kids ages eight to 13. It's offered the City of Largo Park Recreation and Arts Department and the Arts Foundation just happened to have on its board a person most qualified to teach it, hmm, Stephen Halstead. The class was held in two sessions. Because of the pandemic, its size was limited and it had to conform to social distancing and mask wearing restrictions. This of course made it very difficult, right? There were nine kids in the class, the youngest who was seven years old, a little peanut. She was allowed to take part because she had an older sister in the program. It is this child who made the most remarkable progress. She was so shy that she could not even talk and was on the verge of tears for the first three weeks. But the constant encouragement and coaching from Mr. Steven, as the kids call him, had her up and acting by the eighth week. How about that? Pretty incredible. Toward the middle of the sessions, her mom asked her, how did you like it? <clears throat> Throwing her arms up dramatically in the air, she exclaimed, it's amazing. <laughs> this, remember, coming from a child who didn't say very much. That speaks volumes. And her older sister also did a remarkable job in the class. Another student was having some other growing pains and Mr. Steven proved a kind and reassuring influence, always having the time to talk with him not about the class, but about his life outside of the class. Somebody was listening. It was Mr. Steven. It was Steven's way of helping the student deal with not so much drama essentials, but middle school drama. We've all been there. Who's been in middle school, right? We've been there. It's hard to take additional time to talk with this child, not during class, but after hours, is just one of the ways in which Steven has enriched the lives of these students. To watch his students on a big stage using the drama techniques he taught them is a wonderful thing to see. During their cast party, the kids from his class hugged him and introduced him to their friends, telling them they must take their class next time. The, te the techniques Stephen teaches are skills that these students will use during the rest of their lives. Self-confidence, speaking clearly, listening, and treating others with the respect they deserve. To see such strong connections in such a short time is a true testament to his charisma and his willingness to listen, talk, encourage these young people. He's made a huge difference in many of their lives. Congratulations, Stephen Halstead. Would you please come forward and everyone in his group here who's supporting him and his family or friends, please stand up. Stephen, come on up. Let me put on my stage voice. <laughs> First of all,
of all, thank you to the Chamber and the Women's Auxiliary. This is um, very much appreciated, uh, unexpected, um, as is most things in life that are the most meaningful to us. I have to thank my husband for all the support. Every time I say, I want to do something, he goes, okay. Um, <laughs> sometimes I fail, because that's what we do. Uh, but most of the time, I, I figure it out. And if it wasn't for the Central Park Performing Arts Foundation and me being a part of that, I wouldn't even be here today. So um, I'm, when you do what you love solely to give back, that's the real reward. But I'll accept this one. Thank you. This year, we have three business award winners and a future nominee out there right now that we can get. <laughs> Our first one goes to Dove Weaver, founder of Closer to Our Dreams. He was nominated by Richard Bovier in the back of the room of the Oyova Company, who knows Dove from various networking groups, as do I. He writes that Dove loves to inspire people to believe in their dreams. Dove grew up without a father in his life. And while most people would have allowed that to lead to living a life with no purpose, not Dove. He said nothing. He wrote a book about his pain and how he was able to overcome adversity. The book, Chasing Your Dreams, Bound for Success, is a story of forgiveness. Dove realized that it wasn't until he made the hard decision to forgive his father that he was able to pursue his goals and dreams in life with purpose. He's now on a mission to inspire others to pursue their goals and dreams each and every day. As the founder of Closer to Our Green Dreams, he is committed to helping any organization, school, student, or adult that is serious about going after their dreams with passion. Duve is also the president of Dreams to Reality Foundation. It's a nonprofit focused on educating kids, ex-felons, women, veterans, on entrepreneurship. He believes that if these audiences are given the right resources to be successful, they can build businesses that change the world. A high energy speaker with over eight years of experience as a coach and group facilitator, he has spoken to thousands of students, inspired adults to start dreaming again and host events that encourage others. It's all about entrepreneurship. He's also planning a national tour speaking at schools to increase awareness of entrepreneurship. As we all know, it's totally catching on and he's at the right time to totally excel. His passion in life is to inspire anyone that has a dream. Who has a dream here? Come on, we all do. And every single person can live the life you deserve. Congratulations, Dove Weaver. Come on up. Your family is there with you tonight. I want to thank my mother um, for always believing in me and always telling me to chase my dreams. Uh, I remember even when I was a young adolescent, I wanted to play professional basketball. And she would say, go for it, even though I wasn't that good. I <laughs> um, also want to thank my wife, my wonderful wife, and our two kids, DJ and Elise. And I just want to encourage everybody, uh, when you are doing the work that you feel you're called to do and what God has put you on this earth to do, it is no other feeling like it. It's not really about the money, it's about the lives we impact. And I, as I look around this room, our, our saying that closer to our dreams is together we can achieve more, right? So it doesn't matter if we do the same thing, you may have a different spin to it where we can bring something to the table and serve our community, right? Because as our community wins, we all win, right? So I just want to thank you. Thank everybody. The next award is in the community service category. It recognizes those who have inspired us by giving their time, talent, and resources to charitable organizations, groups, or the community at large. Again, we have two honorees. Our first recognizes Ben Brudnicki, a longtime volunteer at Arden Course of Largo, a nonprofit memory care community. He was nominated by Rachel McInerney, a member of the professional staff there. She says she met Ben her first day working at Arden when he arrived to pick up his mother from a respite stay. While they were saying goodbye, 
to the staff, Joan, his mom, said, where are we going? When he told her he was taking her back home to his house, she told him she didn't want to go. Rachel says Ben looked as though somebody had slapped him across his face. He was shocked. What do you mean you don't want to go? That's where we live. It was a mix of surprise and happiness. Their family had struggled with placing his beloved mother, who was living with dementia, in an assisted living facility. It's something that many of us have to face. This respite was the first break they had gotten in years. As Ben and his wife were her full-time live-in caregivers, and they were both still working, <clears throat> they decided that day to leave their mom in Arden Court's care permanently. She loved it there. Over the years that followed, Ben became a fixture of the community. He first donated his time doing the rosary every Wednesday with Catholic residents, and then by offering his DJ services at various Arden family services and events. When the Arden staff tried to get its serious radio working throughout the community, it was Ben who was able to troubleshoot and set up the new system. And every month, he loads the Alive Inside music listening device that aids in dementia treatment. He also attends off-site caregiver events with his loudspeakers and microphones so the caregivers can hear the speakers. I mean, come on, how about that? Ben completed the steps to become a deacon by his church so he could provide communion to Catholic residents. He also provides a religious service that residents enjoy attending, Catholic or not. When his mother Joan passed, all of Arden's courts experienced a loss. However, Ben never, second, never for a second considered not offering weekly rosary and communion even during his own grieving process. He continues to DJ family events and will forever be remembered as a key figure at Arden Courts of Largo. Today we present a well-deserved Inspire honor to Ben Bernicki. Ben, would you please come up and whoever's with him tonight, please stand up as well. I did not practice any kind of a speech, so. <laughs> One thing I have to make, clarify first that I'm not a deacon. So if I was a deacon, the church would cave in. So that's not gonna happen. I, I am a Eucharistic minister. So let's cut it at that. And the first thing I'll say to Arden Courts is, I told them, I've, I've already told them a couple of times, you really know how to ruin a guy's reputation. <laughs> say, I, after all this hard work, and I gotta go back and fix it the way because you just brought me up to the, with this. And this is, sorry. I don't have much more to say except I love the work there. You guys are my extended family. I, am, I love my country. I love my extended family. I love my wife. And I love, love my Jesus. Thank you. is to Diana Baldwin of Ellison of Pinecrest. <laughs> Diana was nominated by Karen McFarlane, executive director there, Woo! and a past recipient as well, nice, and by her friend and former colleague, Sue Osborne. Here's what they tell us about Diana. Diana is the Healthy Lifestyles Director of Ellison of Pinecrest, she has been keeping the residents of the community happy and engaged for the last 15 years. You never know what is going to happen next with her, from Japanese drummers in the lobby to picnics in the park. I was gonna say, can we have a demonstration tonight maybe? Maybe afterwards. <laughs> there are about 300 things to do at Pinecrest each month, and Diana has something to do with all of them. Some programs she has created for residents to maintain and manage week to week. Others are one-time events, to bring out the best in her creativity and her talent. Diana's motto is, until further notice, celebrate everything. <laughs> I love that, who shouldn't embrace that? The seasonal decorations at Pinecrest are spectacular. September, which is right around the corner, brings out the fall foliage, leaves, hay bales, and scarecrows. At Christmas time, there are 30 trees, all decorated with a different theme throughout the community. This festival of trees takes on a ton of time 
and to, a, a ton of time to set up, not mentioning the planning of such enormous events. Another aspect of her work keeps managing the activities of her assisted living and memory care residents. These groups need special attention and specific activities to help them get the most out of life. The COVID epidemic was a definite challenge for Diana. When residents were confined to their rooms, she had to think of ways to keep them entertained, engaged, and happy. True to her convictions as the queen of fun, she figured out how to use the in-house television channel to do everything from exercise to bingo. How about that? And the every evening sing-along when residents went out on their balconies and sang, God bless America was a boost to their spirits. I'm sure it was. Ellison of Pinecrest, Pinecrest has come through that crisis with a better appreciation of Diana and her dedication to the residents there. She is the glue that keeps Pinecrest of Ellison's community spirit and satisfaction high, way high. Congratulations, Diana Baldwin. Would you please come up and have anyone who's with you please stand up too. Hi everyone. Hello. Thanks so much. I did have a prepared speech, but I left it at home. Rats. Um, you know, I am so blessed. I have been actually now at Pinecrest 16 years. And I still look forward to going to work every single day to see the wonderful people that I work for and the wonderful people I work with. I work with some of the best uh, management team you could ever find. And, and they are my extended family. And I have to make sure I let my husband know that I appreciate him. He, uh, I could work a 12 hour day. And he's like, okay, and I'm gonna have pizza ready for me when I get home. So thank you for taking good care of me as I take care of the residents. Thank you again. I'm going to go ahead and go again. This next award is our second in the Inspiring Youth category. And that honoree is Jennifer Fawcett of the City of Largo Recreation, Parks, and Arts. She was nominated, she was nominated by Krista Pinsens, Director of the Department, and Mark Abdo, its Community Liaison. Here's what they tell us about her. Jennifer is a dedicated professional who has a strong passion to love and care for all children. She holds a position of children's program supervisor. Her responsibilities include overseeing the child care programs, including preschool, before and after care, and summer camp, which may have just ended, so she's been busy. <laughs> On a personal level, she and her husband have fostered dozens of children and continue to be a resource and voice for the local foster care community. She advocates on their behalf in court, with biological parents, with social workers, all to ensure the best outcome for those kids. In dealing with children and parents, Jennifer must be able to remain flexible. New methods were created and experienced during the COVID pandemic, and childcare operations were no different. She was asked to provide childcare for the City of Largo employees at Highland Complex and did so under very trying circumstances. She also worked to revive the preschool at Southwest Recreation Complex. She had several ideas and worked with various agencies so they were able to meet protocols. This was outside her scope of duty since her primary focus is childcare programs at Highland Recreation. Jennifer works closely with the Early Learning Coalition to make sure students transition between providers and programs so that they have no break in service. Truly critical. She facilitates services for families by connecting them to the appropriate personnel. She will go above and beyond her call of duty to help parents navigate and obtain subsidies for the children, like Early Learning Coalition, as well as seek agencies who provide other support and bridge that information. She also facilitates an annual summer camp workshop through the Florida Recreation and Park Association and is a regular presenter at Largo's annual conference about childcare and programming. On slow days, she is an interpreter for the hearing impaired. I don't know if she has time for any of this, right? <laughs> We're very happy she could find the time to be with us today. Congratulations to Jennifer Fawcett. Would you please come up and family members please stand. to be here. 
media this evening, and I definitely want to thank the Central Pinellas Chamber of Commerce for hosting us this significant award. It's an amazing thing that they're doing, and I'm grateful that they take the time to recognize inspirations in our community. I wouldn't be standing here today, though, if it wasn't for the support of so many people that are in my corner. I thank my husband for, without him, I wouldn't be able to do the things I do. <coughs> he supports me through long nights, early mornings, and crazy ideas like, hey, wanna be foster parents? <laughs> um, <laughs> his love and support is unconditional, and I'll be forever grateful that God placed him in my life. He's my foundation, my sounding board, and my biggest cheerleader. Um, I come from a very large family. Uh, there are seven of us, and uh, we grew up together. We may have been lacking material things, but we were rich in the things that matter. I have the most loving, encouraging family, and I just want to thank them. Um, they opened their hearts every time we brought a child into our family. It was our family. I felt support from every member, and they helped us by giving love and demonstrating what a healthy relationship, what a healthy family environment looks like. And I just thank you guys, because you're part of my journey, and you're part of inspiring me. Thank my two sons for giving up of themselves Sometimes their bed, sometimes their clothes, and especially their toys uh, were shared. And I couldn't end this without thanking my amazing coworkers that support me in my efforts every day to serve Largo's youth. Without their strengths and their resources, I wouldn't be able to be successful. I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by many passionate individuals that lift me up and let me be who I was meant to be. I thank God for giving me this heart because I love being a servant. Nothing brings me more joy than serving others. And I plan to be a servant for the rest of my life. And I hope that God continues to inspire me to inspire others. And I hope tonight that we all walk out the doors inspired to do more, to say more, and to be more to those in need in our community. Thank you. Our third Inspire Award in the business category is to the husband and wife team, Julie and Colin Castle of Home Instead Senior Care, and be a Santa to a senior. They were nominated by the Chamber Board of Directors represented by Chairman Nate Coco who tell us that Colin and Julie are a very rare find these days. They both take great pleasure in doing for others while preferring to stay behind the scenes. Not tonight. <laughs> Colin was born in Guam to a military family, moved to Pinellas as a toddler, and has been here ever since. Julie was born in Michigan and moved here as a youngster in 1980. Over the years, they have kept their home a very busy one having fostered 30 children and adopting nine since 2016. You do the math. Indeed. Colin spent his first early professional career with Rico Americas Corporation as a strategic account sales manager. He was responsible for a $25 million managed services budget that spanned the Tampa Bay Orlando, Jacksonville, and Tallahassee markets. Meanwhile, Julie became a franchise owner of Home Instead Senior Care. Home Instead is the largest non-medical in-home care company, helping seniors with their daily activities to remain safe and healthy. In 2014, Colin made a major career change when he joined Julie at Homestead Instead, Home Instead as Director of Sales and Marketing Today, he serves as vice president. Colin and Julie say they've been honored to help seniors stay active and safe in their homes while offering rewarding careers to caregivers. 
On top of their active family and business, they also find time for their nonprofit. Be a Santa to a senior, adopt a mom, adopt a dad, which gives gifts to local seniors for Christmas, Mother's Day, and Father's Day. How about that? And Colin remains active with a charity organization called First 25 that he started with his high school friends. It helps kids with sports, homework, and reading. The castle's generosity over the years has been extended in support of the chamber and its many activities. They have maintained an annual investment as a gold member of the chamber trustee board since 2017. They also provide financial support on several chamber events and programs, including a major sponsor of these Inspire Awards, the annual economic focus breakfast, chamber annual meeting and awards breakfast, and is a premium space advertiser in the chamber's business and community go-to guides. Colin also served two terms as a chamber director and led the efforts with the website and database, which continues to evolve. From their commitments to seniors, children, the needy, and community at large, we present this Inspire Award in Business to Colin and Julie Castle. Please come up, friends and family, please come. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you know, I I've been at these awards a, a lot of the years, and it's been our pleasure to uh, support this. It's, it's been nice sitting, you know, at times listening to the stories uh, for many years. Um, and, and Tom knows I, I, I support this and, and, and many of the other, other endeavors, uh, my wife and I actually, the endeavors of the, of the chamber. This is a special one because it, it's nice to hear the stories. Um, and, and I resonate with, with most of them personally from my best friends and I working with, with youth and, and seeing some great stories to I can relate to the, um, hey, let's, 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 let's foster. It's a great idea. <laughs> just uh, for the weekend. Yeah, just, yeah sorry, just for the weekend. So uh, I appreciate it and you know, it's, it's been an honor. And I have to say, the folks in this room are the reason why we're a success. If it was not for the chamber and many of the chamber events, and there's, they are sponsors here in the room that helped make my program and our program what it is today. And I cannot do it without you and neither, you know, neither can the, the program. So thank you to you that are in this room and thank you for the continued help with that. So um, my Inspire story was, um, and probably Jennifer has heard the starfish story, so I'm not sure, I'm gonna assume that not everyone has heard the starfish story, but it's what inspired me. <clears throat> it's a one day man was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking up and gently throwing into the ocean uh, and he approached the boy and said, what are you doing? The youth replied, I'm throwing the starfish back into the ocean, the surf is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them back in, they'll die. No. I'm not good at public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's why she sends me most of the time. <laughs> the man said, don't you realize there are miles and miles of beach and thousands of starfish? You can't make a difference. After listening politely, the young boy said, I made a difference for that one. <laughs> so I try to make a difference from to my foster children, to my employees, to my clients, one day at a time. So that's, thank you for recognizing it. And, and just, and just, back to, behind the scenes. And just to <laughs> clarify, we have an adopted nod. We actually have nine. It's my crazy story I like to tell, because 10 years ago, I was single, <coughs> living in an apartment, <laughs> not a worry in the world, with a, decent, with a good job, she came and out. not a lot of bills. <laughs> However, my story is I married into a lovely family of three. My wife and I had one together, which was fantastic, so it started four, and you know, my wife and I both, I'm, fan, I'm six, She's she's got extended family, of, you know, five. We wanted to do more, but you know, she came back and said, uh, "Baby factory's done. <laughs> Happen out. Let's do something different." Fostering came around, so we're five years into this. Four bios, three adopted, the, two fosters, a partridge, and a pear, pear tree. Our next Inspire Award category is public service. This is for those who represent government, education, and public safety. 
It celebrates individuals who devote their time to making our community a better place to live, work, and play. It's with pleasure that we present this year's honor to Dr. Brad Finkbeiner. Brad just retired as Largo High School principal following a drum roll, please. Anybody, drum roll. Thank you, thank you very much. 37 year career with Pinellas County Schools. That's a long time. He was nominated by a friend and high school coach, Dan Flynn of State Farm Insurance. Brad's career in Pinellas County Schools included 15 years at Lingelman Discovery Middle School and Osceola High School. He spent 12 years as assistant principal at Osceola High before landing at Largo High a decade ago. During his tenure, he was part of the change that saw Osceola become the county's first fundamental high school. While at Largo High, he oversaw the success of both the Excel and Ivy programs. Here are some examples of his many achievements at Largo High. It is impressive, get ready. Most notably, he oversaw the construction of the new school moved into a temporary campus with 54 learning cottages during the two-year construction, increased graduation rate from 76% in 2012 to 97% last year. Was site supervisor for Hurricane Shelter in Hurricane Irma that had 400 occupants, led Largo High through two years of COVID, Help develop and sustain international baccalaureate program, which continues to grow each year. Maintained the Excel Magnet program and grown the largest standalone AVID or advanced via individual determination program in the district. And he established a positive collaborations throughout the community with Rotary, Kiwanis, City of Largo, Boys and Girls Clubs, American Legion, and Central Pinellas Chamber of Commerce. No doubt he has touched the lives of many through his career. There are a lot of children he touched mm -hmm. in his lives and it made a difference and that's 37 years of making a difference crazy. For that, we celebrate Dr. Brad Finkbeiner for our Inspire Award for Public Service. Brad, can you please come up and your family's here? How y'all doing? Everybody's all right? It's good that I was in uh, education for 37 years because I'm only 42 years old. <laughs> Let me say a couple quick things. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Dan. Uh, he was my first uh, girls soccer coach uh, when I took over in 2012. And then the first year uh, we were told that we were going to build a new school and that was my first year as a principal. And uh, you're in charge. Okay, here we go. Working with you this community has been one of the greatest things that I've ever had the opportunity to do. It never amazes me how important a community school is to a community. You are the community. I've worked with probably every person in this room at one time or another, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you, I, I accept this um, for the staff and the scholars of Largo High. That's what I do. We had the opportunity. What a run for 10 years. Built a school, went through COVID, went through a hurricane. It wasn't 400, it was 4,000. We were the largest capacity in the state of Florida. Don't ask me how we did it. <laughs> but uh, we didn't have a fight. We. Uh, we had one person made 640,000 cups of coffee in those four days. We didn't have a fight, we didn't have anybody die. It was a good day, George. It was a good weekend for me. I will finish with this, uh, two things. One, uh, my greatest compliment that I can get from any parent that has come up to me and, and you know, I was principal for 10 years and they said, Brad, you can't imagine how great my kids' high school experience was. Okay, we did our job. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want you to remember is that my first year around the school, we had hashtag OTP all over the school. I didn't even know what it meant, so I asked, I, help me out here. They said, sir, it means only the pack. Only the pack. All of you, this community, is only the pack. Thank you very much. Our final award.
the category inspiring community service, we recognize Vernon Bryant of the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation. He was nominated by the Foundation Board and organizations from throughout Pinellas County. From the beginning of his involvement with the Botan Florida Botanical Gardens, Vernon has been a leader, advocate, donor, sponsor, spokesperson, and inspiration to anyone who works and volunteers there. Starting, at the horticulture, starting as the horticultural manager in 2000, he was involved in all aspects of the garden's creation, from the acquisition of the land, to construction, to overall management, through 2012. After serving as executive director of Ridgecrest YMCA, he returned to the gardens and became the executive director of its foundation in 2017. Vernon uniquely stands out as a leader and a mentor and has accomplished so much. The following are just a few examples of how he has inspired and delighted the entire community. He implemented ongoing programming at the gardens, including managing of the annual holiday lights in the gardens event from its inception. Who's been there? Okay. He orchestrated the return of the African American Heritage Celebration in 2021. He coordinated partnerships with the community through his connections with Rotary, local garden clubs, Pinellas County Schools, Master Gardeners, the Florida West Coast Orchid Society, Florida Nursery, Growers and Landscaper Association, Florida Farm Bureau, Family Center of Deafness, Largo Public Library, and local youth and church ministries. He guided the foundation ensuring that its mission, values, and vision are integrated into all aspects of its work, including management of staff, participating on volunteering committees, and facilitating internships throughout St. Pete College and Eckerd College. Not only has he accomplished these tasks, but he has done it by creating teamwork and cohesion amongst the organizations, encouraging unity, motivating with enthusiasm, and leading by example. Vernon volunteers with several community-based organizations that also strongly recommends him for the Inspire Awards with support letters. These include the Rotary Club of Indian Rocks Beach, the Anona Methodist Church, Shiloh Ministries, Gulf Coast JFCS, His House Worship Center, Richard O. Jacobson Technical High School, Greater Largo <coughs> Library Foundation, and Friends of Ridgecrest. And I'm sure there are more too. In recognition of his determined efforts to inspire and impact, we recognize Vernon Bryant with the Inspire Award for Community Service. Vernon, would you please come up and have your family stand to One definition of inspire is to fill someone with the urge or ability to do or feel something, especially to do something creative, selfless, or life-changing. I must admit that I have not lived my life with the intention to inspire anybody. But I've always worked to do the right things, godly things, things that needed to be done. In doing these things, I am grateful that I have been and hopefully will continue to be an inspiration for others. There is so much that needs to be done in our world today to right the wrongs, to help the helpless, to give hope to the hopeless, and I hope that many of you will join me to do all we can while we can to make our world a better place for all of humanity. I am grateful to the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation for nominating me uh, for this year's Inspire Awards and for all the people that sent in letters of support. You are all very gracious and um, I love you all. Thanks also to my wife, Tish, my children, Torrance and Tian and my grandsons, Tristan, Travion, and Tyreek, for giving me their unconditional love and support. Um, in a few weeks, I will retire from my position as the executive director of the Florida Botanical Gardens, but my plans are to continue to be richly involved and totally committed there for the foreseeable future, especially doing what I can to help to complete the Majid Discovery Garden, a very special place for children and to continue the tradition of holiday lights in the garden. There is a great group of community servants there that are committed to completing 
this special garden. And I hope that many of you will decide to support that effort financially so we can get this done. I also invite you to join me in my work with Rotary International, where our motto is service above self. There you can also work alongside another great group of community servants that are doing great work in the world. And of course, as a Christian, I invite you to join us as we allow God to inspire us to greater good and greater works in the world. But if none of those strike your fancy, then join me with Gulf Coast Jewish Family and Community Service or Ready for Life or for Young Life or Friends of Ridgecrest or Supervisor Elections or the Heart Gallery or Jacobson Technical High School. They all need help. Thanks again to the uh, Central Pinellas Chamber Women Leadership Committee for this honor. And I will end here unashamedly asking once again for your financial support for us to get the Majid Discovery Garden done. Thank you. So I think we need to have everybody who won tonight, let's stand up one more time, please. Let's remember who they are. that when you're doing it and people notice it, serendipitously, that's a word, people notice and they lift you up and they salute you. So I think everyone in this room tonight has that ability and that possibility to do more, inspire more, be more, and it's a better community because of all of that. So tonight, congratulations. We all have, have an effort and, and job to do in this world, and I think everybody's starting to do it and working together, and it's quite amazing. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Thanks for everyone who was here. Thank you, Tom and, and team, for inviting me to be a part of this. It's been my honor and, and a great joy, truly. So that concludes our 2022 Inspire Awards program. Thanks to all the winners and the nominees and the sponsors. Uh, you are doing great things in our community, and let's just keep it going. Thanks, everybody.